Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I am Joan Lowe, the owner of a Joan Lowe Cage Fighting Series. Number four is going down May 28th in the heart of San Francisco. Right next to me, I have Cesar Romero's officially signed today. We'll be competing on our upcoming event against a very game opponent from San Jose, Francisco Ocampos. Now, let's introduce Cesar to all the Northern California Five fans out there, who you are, where are you coming from? I'm out of fighting out of Salinas, California. You know, I actually train at home, do a lot of my own training. Uh, I have some really good training partners that come by the come by my garage and stuff. We have mats, all of it. Um, yeah, do a lot of just kind of, as you can say, garage training, but you know, I feel like my training partners are A1. No, I, I've been following you on the social media. Uh, you're always hitting 24 hour fitness, always keep yourself in shape, lifting weights, doing a lot of circuit training. Uh, so now, how long have you been doing martial arts? So I've been in, I've been wrestling since I was seven years old, but deep into martial arts is I didn't pick it up until later on in life when I was 21. Um, I was just working and just kind of actually got asked. Um, I heard you want to fight, so I'm like, um, kind of, yeah, I do actually. I, I, no bullshit. Like, is that really what like? And the guy actually looked at me. He's like, have I ever bullshitted you or anything like that? I'm like, nope. Set it up. Okay. Next thing you know, I'm actually fighting. Um, in Salinas, in my own hometown and everything, yes. for my first event and everything, and it was it was a blast, you know, and ever since then I was dead on into it. How do you see yourself, I know you are amateur right now, um, coming off the record of a two wins and three losses, coming off a couple of hiccups, what do you want to do in the future yourself as a fighter? Uh, always evolve, you know, I, as, as a fighter that's all you really can do, especially to step in the cage and everything, like, I can sit there and look at the cage in the back and just like, yeah, evolution in there. And it's just constantly evolving at the highest levels all the way to the bottom. Like even at the lower levels right now, I mean, a lot of these guys can all be pros and we're all just kind of, like you said, a little few hiccups here and there, kind of set everyone back a little bit. In the perfect world, how much longer you want to do an amateur before you want to go pro? Uh, I would like to, I mean, I would jump sign a pro Tomorrow, if, it, if, I, if someone felt like it was, if I had the talent to do, be on the pro card, then yes, I would sign tomorrow. But, you know, I know in a realistic, to be realistic, I it would say like another two fights, two to three fights, would, I would, you know, um, I'm real about it and understand. So wrapped up this year, it's an amateur career, mm -hmm. maybe shoot for the pro next year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So now, I, know, I noticed you, you fought at 135 pounds, you fought 145 this upcoming one, and you even fought at 155 pounds. Um, what, what weight do you walk around? Uh, as of lately, I've, I mean, life kind of changes. I've gone fluctuated, uh, my weight through up, lots of ups and downs. Um, but as of right now, I walk around at a good, like 155, 160, but 45 is the no, no problem. That's the, that's the ideal right now, for sure. What do you see yourself in the future as you keep fighting and training? Like, what's the perfect weight class do you think you're gonna fall into that you wanna fight at? I can see myself competing at either 135 or 45, maybe even all the way up, even to 155, because I've fought there, and I, I feel like fighting is just in my blood, and it's just really a matter of training and looking at my opponent and knowing exactly kind of what's what's coming in. Some of those 55ers nowadays, they look pretty big, you know? So yeah. like they walk around like in the 180s and then they drop to 155, you know? So you know, they're also taller, six foot and all that too, you know? So it can be dangerous 155, but I think 35, you can make 135, you're definitely gonna be a large <laughs> 135, you know? Cutting weight's fun, yeah. or fun. So yeah, I'd love to take on that challenge for sure. So now on the upcoming fight, you're fighting Francisco Campos. Mm -hmm. You watch his last fight and you, you, you were there watching him fight. How do you feel on this upcoming fight? You know, how are you gonna approach him on him? Um, you know, I, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to watch tape on him. Find, look, look to find any little things that I can do. But you know, uh, once you step in that cage, it's really, you do have a plan, but once you get hit in the face, or like it kind of goes all out the window, and it's a matter of survival in there, and kind of like evolution, just evolving to every situation that kind of happens. So I'm ready to kind of take it anywhere it needs to go. Now he only have two amateur fights, and both fights actually end very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I don't really see too much of his striking. The very first fight, he fought a Brazilian guy, 
uh, uh, from Surround uh, uh, BJJ. He literally just walked overhand and the guy dazed and he run up and jumped on the guy's back. He ended up got a weird naked choke. So I'm not really sure, consider he's a striker or a wrestler. The last fight he against Drew Davis, I mean, obviously he went for the takedown mm -hmm. and then Drew just put him on a triangle that also <coughs> ended like in the first minute. So, you know, how do you prepare for him that you can't really qualify, you know, categorize him as was a striking, was a wrestler? Like, for what I see, it's a little bit more torch like a wrestler, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, how are you gonna prepare for him? I'd like to just go ahead and make, I guess, do my own thing in there. When I'm in there, you know, do a uh, train, do what I do best. I mean, that's wrestling, grappling, and getting my hands on the guy. You know, like you can even see in my past fights that um, I fought at, my first fight was actually at 160. It was a catch fight at 160. Oh, damn. Yeah, like it was supposed to, the guy didn't want to cut, but I said, you know what, it's fine. I, I got to eat that evening and took on the next fight and took on the fight that next day. And in that match, you know, I was healthy, working out every single day and lifting constantly and training with a gym. Um, and I was able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Take him down, grapple him, ground and pound the entire fight, you know. Worked a couple submissions that I was not quite able to finish, but you know, you did see something that I'm always gonna be constantly looking to work on. Yeah, well, this this upcoming fight, definitely like a very unpredictable, like I don't have enough footage on the guy that I can't really see what I want him, I want to call him as a striker or a wrestler. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how this fight's gonna play out. Now, um, how old are you right now, Caesar? I'm 27. You're 27. 20, just turned 28, actually. Just, just, last, just turned 28 on the third. Oh wow! Yeah, I actually kind of forgot it was even my birthday because I've been so kind of focused <laughs> in, in getting into the cage and everything, and just getting my getting getting back on the ship, you know, getting back get to the ball, getting the ball rolling again. That's pretty good. Yeah. So now you're training in Salinas. You have your own little home team. You know, people coming in, you know, so, uh, uh, and this will be the first time you're fighting on a, on the biggest regional show in California. You know, it's a pro M car, so you get to weigh in the day before, and then the day of the fight, you know, you don't have to worry about fighting, you know, a few hours before you, you know, weigh in, and then the fight a few hours later, you have a whole day, hydrate, sleep, the whole nine yard. So mm -hmm. hopefully see a better performance. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, for and, sure. um, and and I mean the I'm way I to yeah, at the way I look at you, I think you definitely might have a little bit of size advantage on mm -hmm. um, on Francisco. He's slightly a little shorter and smaller. So uh, originally he was actually going down to one thirty five oh, to okay. to fight another guy, and then but the one thirty five pound guys like end up he's like got some kind of injury. He cannot fight, so he's like well. I want. I don't mind a fight. He actually won a rematch with Drew Davis. You know, so he's he, a fighter, so he wants. Yeah, to get it. So yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm really excited for that. So, yeah, but cool. I told him like, well, you know, Drew wanted to move on and try to get on a different opponent. You know, not saying he's not a good opponent, but Dave, you know, Drew wants to challenge himself to get a guys that have a bigger record. You know, so he finally uh, Drew Davis locked in with uh, uh, Christopher Fernandez, that is like have almost ten amateur fights now. Oh, so. Uh, um, so when you're looking for trying to make yourself turn pro, you have to look for the top dogs. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think both point. both you guys have a, a journey to achieve. Now, out of equation, uh -huh. anybody, any fighter on your knowledge that you know that you wants to fight in California. So he's actually from the Bay Area. Um, I was I showed up to your last event and it was uh, it was great. So I'm I'm looking forward to being there and being able to kind of take the same stage. But I feel like maybe he stood a little too too tall and too proud and kind of mouthed off a little bit too much for the opponent that he actually fought. Um, you can clearly see that there's a skill difference and just when you win like that, you kind of, I feel like you should be able to win with class and stuff like that. And I just, I really just didn't like the way he walked around the cage and stuff because two belts. So, you know, I'd like to take those two, not gonna lie. You talking about uh, James? James? I believe his name. Yeah, James Gertie. I believe his James name is Gertie. James Gertie. Yeah, I'm not quite okay. sure. Okay, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to make one thirty-five to fight him. Thirty-five is wanting. Well, we just talked about that. Thirty-five is something a challenge that I would love to make, and I I feel like that would be something that I'll take that on all day. So I know he's fighting at one hundred forty-five pounds on a lot of small other smaller shows that weigh in the same day, fighting a few hours later. But fighting on a big show like us, you know, waiting the day before, he wants to stay at 135. Well, he's the interim champ. I'm hoping, trying to get him unified with the belt with Jeremy Exquoter, and that is a Taekwondo black belt record, four and one. 
that should be a firework and Jeremy's waiting on his um, uh, uh, a doctor to get him clears to some injuries, you know. So it'll be interesting, hopefully that, that matchup can be made the next couple of days, mm -hmm. you know. So well, now, if your opponent, Francis Ocampo watching this interview, mm -hmm. what do you have to say to him? Um, just best of luck, you know, we'll get ready to get in there and fucking fight, let's go. But you know, I, I'm excited to finally actually come back in here and have some really great training partners finally, you know, and a, um, a good place, you know, like I finally, had a place to settle down and really some good training partners to start training with. So I'm excited. And the first time fight in the pay-per-view event and also That's in San yeah. Francisco, <laughs> along with the big, huge pro card that we have a five pro titles on the line. This upcoming event is kind of crazy. So um, I look forward to have you perform on the upcoming card, May 28th. We are updating the website this weekend. So if you guys want to check out the DragonHouseMMA.com, you see the whole entire fight card layout, not all of it, but you know, Probably 60, 70 percent of fighters is going to be uh, lit up on the website. So making sure you guys stay tuned. The events live stream pay per view nationwide on all different devices. So if you guys can uh, sit in the bathroom, watch the event, your phone, your laptop, the TV. Make sure you guys order your pay per view voucher from DragonHouseMMA.com. Um, now, do you have any special sponsor, training partners, and uh, loved ones that you want to shout out to? Uh, you know, of course, I always want to give a shout out to my parents. You know, they're they're my biggest supporters. They've always supported me from the very start of this journey. Day one. Day one. You know, so that's number one. And I'd like to give a shout out to my training partners as well. And and that's you know that's about it. You know, like, sounds good. Do don't you have, have any sponsors uh, right now? No, but not yet. Right. Uh, looking to take Annie on, please. You know, yes, like yes. that. That's the goal to always as well to be able to continue in this journey and everything like that, you know, so. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have a, a couple more event after May 28th. The one after is gonna be in Cow Palace, August 20. Will be the biggest show we put on, uh, um, the biggest event in, the, in Northern California. Definitely the biggest regional show. So um, make sure all the fighters wanna get on that card August 20, you DM me ahead of time. We will start working on that fight card by the beginning of next month as well. And then the last show of the year, November 12th, uh, Dragon House, John Low Cage Fighting Series number six. It's gonna go down November 12th at Kizar again. So uh, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Help me to grow my YouTube channel, guys. Follow me on Instagram, dragon underscore underscore, uh, dragon underscore house underscore MMA. And uh, follow me on Instagram and my Facebook as well. Uh, any last word you wanna say to anyone else out there? Um, no, you guys just, yeah. Buy the pay-per-view if you can't show up, buy tickets. You know, you can actually also get tickets off of me. My Instagram is Cheezer1400. It is with four R's. So go ahead and reach out to me as well. I'm gonna be selling tickets too. So yes, yes. come come support. You know, it's gonna be one hell of a show for sure. And this is where the platforms where a lot of people is gonna make it to UFC, Bellator, all the world class, one championship, a lot of fighter coming up from amateur to my show, and then get to the pro, and then from there go on the big uh, world class platform. Many, many of them uh, the last 15 years that I've seen it. So uh, it will be a good little documentary today as an interview, also witnessing history. Let's see how far you go in a few years from now. And this, this video interview will become part of your history, you know. Definitely. So uh, that's awesome. Well, Caesar, we thank know. you for this opportunity. And uh, I am Joan Lowe signing out. We'll see you guys May 28th in our San Francisco Keys Art Pavilion. I'm signing out.